Welcome to the Courageous Entrepreneur Show. This is the show that shares information and inspiration to help you break free from self-doubt, limiting beliefs, and disempowering patterns, and break through to create the thriving, successful business you dream of and deserve. I'm your host, Winnie Anderson. The show features interviews with entrepreneurs who've overcome amazing challenges to create success on their terms and experts who share insight and practical information to help you, the introverted, mission-driven entrepreneur, move forward with courage, confidence, and clarity so you consistently reach your biggest goals. If you like what you hear, I hope you'll share the show with others. Be sure to visit WinnieAnderson.com slash Military Mama, M-A-M-A, Military Mama, all one word, so you get the show notes and worksheet for this episode. As a mission-driven solo professional or micro firm owner, I'm sure you're always looking for ways to get your message out easier, faster, and to an audience of people you know are interested in and even passionate about the same things you are. And it's likely you've heard and maybe even already experienced the power of social networking groups to build community and to grow a business. In this episode, Jerry Ann Wiesbrook is going to talk about Facebook groups and share tips on growing and strengthening one of your own. Lots of people call themselves experts on the subject of using Facebook and building a group on Facebook, but very, very few are actually recognized as a community leader by Facebook itself. Jerry Ann is a fellow in the Facebook Community Leadership Program. This means she's one of the top 115 group leaders on Facebook, and she was selected for that program from a pool of over 6,000 people. She's been repeatedly recognized by Facebook since 2017 when she was invited to the first Facebook Communities Summit, and she became a member of the leadership team for a Facebook invitation-only leadership group. She's featured in training videos Facebook created, and she participated in a roundtable on group and small business tools for growth with Facebook Chief Operating Officer Cheryl Sandberg. Jerian is a frequent speaker at Facebook Leadership Circles in Chicago. She is the founder of Military Mama Network, which started as a group on Facebook and is now a 501c organization. The group started in 2013 after Jerry Ann recognized the needs of her Army recruit son and other U.S. military members. MMN has grown to provide support to U.S. troops and their families and maintains the Military Mama Network Facebook community. MMN has a presence in all 50 states and chapters in several states. Their goal is to have chapters in all 50 states, which would enable them to continue to serve our troops and veterans in a swift but personal manner. Remember, remember, my guests and I aren't giving you specific business advice. The information we're sharing is for educational and entertainment purposes only. If you need help, be sure to seek out a trained professional, whether it's a financial advisor, tax professional, business building expert, or healthcare provider. Listen in as Jerry Ann dispels some common myths about members of the military and explains the needs they often have that go unmet. She'll explain the evolution of Military Mama Network and how the work has grown to support the military member through basic training, through deployment, and then release, as well as how the group supports families. She talks about the challenges women face to own their expertise recognize themselves as leaders and step into their power, as well as why she feels a group may not be right for every business, why a group's culture is so important, and how you can focus on consciously creating the kind of group you want. You want to listen to this with a notepad handy because Jerry Ann tosses out super tips throughout our conversation. As always, listen all the way to the end where I'll share your cocktail exercise and action step for this episode. All right, Jerry, and thanks so much for being with me today. I'm excited to have you here and share your story. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. Thanks. All right, so let's just dive right in. So yeah. I don't want to say your primary job, but, you know, let's say your primary paid work, right, is consultant, speaker, and I think you do training as well in the areas of so, uh, social media and that sort of thing. So specifically, 
in starting, running, and leveraging a Facebook group, right? But the story of how you got there, I think, is a really fascinating one. So why don't you share a little bit about your journey and how you got to this point as a consultant and Facebook group guru now? Yeah, yeah it's a pretty crazy story. So <laughs> I had raised two kids, had one grandchild who I love to spoil, had a little part-time job and a hobby and, you know, life balance. And then my son joined the Army. <clears throat> and um, with that, I realized how little I knew about the Army because we are a Navy family going back like 20, literally 20 generations. And so, <clears throat> listen, nothing against my current Army moms, but the Army moms that I ran into six years ago, like right now, were kind of mean and really snarky. And I'm like, I don't, I don't want to be part of that. Yeah, like. Was it that you don't understand us kind of thing? And yeah, so each so if you're in the military, there are some overriding terminology, but if right. it, it, there's some that are branch specific. Mm -hmm. And so I said a Navy branch specific to an Army group, and like they literally handed me my butt back, and I was like, I, I and you know, so I'm super emotional anyway because my kid joined the Army, right? And now I'm finding mean moms, and so I just retreated. Well, at the same time, the Army decided that they were going to create a Facebook group for all the families of the people going through this particular class of basic training. Okay. And so they threw us all together. And I think honestly, it was to just get, to contain the crazy. <laughs> yeah. But uh, what ended up happening is there was a group of us that got super close and, and stayed connected for the full 10 weeks that our kids were, that kids could have been our sons, daughters, or spouses, fiancés, like the whole group of us like kids to me, uh, were training. And so at the end of it, the Army said, okay, well, we're done. And then I ended up with this group. And from that started this whole cra crazy thing that sort of aligned perfectly with my skills, right? So we were sending um, like boxes and cards and stuff like that to the people who were training with my son because half of the people who join our military don't get support from home. For a variety of reasons, right? There, are a lot of kids join the military because it's their only way out economically. Yes. And so it makes sense that their families could not support them. Yeah. But some of them, their choice is jail or the military. So then their family isn't all that involved with their life frequently. Not always true, but frequently. And then there are some that just, you know, it's just how it is. You wouldn't have family support if you were in college. So you don't have family support in the military. Right. And so we would send supplies. The small group of us would send supplies enough to share. And from that, it just like grew and grew and grew. So he graduated. Other people started asking for help. And um, it was kind of taking over my Facebook life. So in the irony of all ironies of my life, I said, I'm going to just start this group so that it doesn't take over my <laughs> profile on Facebook. <laughs> And it grew from there. Like, there was a lot of things that happened along the way. Mm -hmm. But our culture immediately was we're a PG group. You know, be nice. We don't do sales. That wasn't the immediate, but it was very quick because we're a niche market and people love to sell to us. And so anyway, we created this culture that was very nurturing and very accepting and very warm. And also, the expectation that the information shared would be accurate and timely. Right, so we're not going to share something that's three years old that's floating around the internet, which is fantastic, but it's just not timely. Right, and so that all combined, and we were just doing our thing, you know, sending boxes, and then we already added some Christmas stuff, and then we added helping families in um, crisis due to um, medical crisis of their kids. Uh, again, because the military does not pay well, and people don't realize this. For the people, we call them junior enlisted, one, two, three. They've been in three, four, five years. Right. They literally make enough that while they're getting extra pay for being in a combat zone, right. while they're getting extra pay for being separated from their spouse, they can literally qualify for food stamps. Yeah, let's, let's stop there for a second okay. because that alone, we could go off on a whole nother tangent, right, about the, inf the maybe the misinformation or misunderstandings that people yeah. have about people who are in the military. I have a history of, of family members in the military. I almost joined the Navy myself, and uh, when, when I was uh, in, you know, looking for what was I going to do post high school, I come from a, an area that is not exactly 
uh, rolling in dough economically, <laughs> and and it was an escape for us. But one thing you and I'm making notes. So while while you talk, that's what I do when I glance down and start writing. One of the things you said was that you sent supplies to these people in the military. So that alone, I want to just get out there that. Mm-hmm. I mean, let's just talk. Why do you send supplies? Because obviously these people need them. So can you talk just a little bit about the kinds of supplies that a a new recruit type of person would need? Yeah. Well, so that's uh, specific to their chain of command. Okay. So what will happen is, uh, you know, your person, we now call them your loved one and service member instead of your kid in the army because... That's how we started, but we've expanded. So your loved one joins the military, and they get given pretty early on a list of things that they can be sent. Okay. Um, The Marines are very strict. The the Navy literally boxes everything up and sends it home. Like everything, you're close. So all you have is Navy stuff. Wow. Yeah, super strict. Army, not so much. And I'm not sure about the Air Force. The Air Force seems to align itself with the Army. But there are things that you don't expect to need. And also there are things you're not allowed to bring, but you'll need along the course of training. For example, there's this stuff called mole skin. It's like yes. super thick band-aid, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, it's great for um, uh, blisters. Yeah. Well, when you're marching 12 miles, which they are, yeah. you get blisters. Yep. And so sending mole skin, but it's not just sending a slab of mole skin because they don't have anything to cut it with on the other side. So we cut them to size. And those are the kinds of things we learned along the way. Right, you can't send them scissors, the scissors get taken, but right. you can cut them so that they're good enough. They may not be perfect, but they're better than what they had, which was nothing. Right. All right. So then we send stuff like that and we send cough drops because cough drops in basic training is uh, the equivalent of money. You can trade it for other things, stamps and stuff like that. I also sent for my son and for all of his people, I would send envelopes that had paper already folded up in it in a stamp and a return label with their information on it. Great. Because when you have 10 minutes to write, looking for all that stuff is not. Right. We just tried to streamline and really think about, like, how to problem solve what their needs were and get it to the next level. Right. But the other piece of it, Winnie, that is super important, and one of the things that we really pride ourselves on, that everything goes out with a personal touch. Everything. Nice. There's a letter that says, Dear soldier, trainee, hero, if we don't know their name, but it's handwritten. And it's, there's an address and a, a contact information. If you need additional support, you know, this is how you get it from us. And we stay with them. So they'll deploy, they'll come back, they'll deploy again, they'll come back. And we stay with them for the life of their career. But then even as veterans, like a lot of times we, because we've been around long enough now that kids are getting out that trained with my son. And um, so the people are like, well, it's been great, but we need to leave. No, you don't, because we have this veteran arm. And actually, that's a big part. Are we going to be talking about the Facebook project? Uh, yes, we can. Well, that's a big part of our Facebook project is we're doing all of this, these steps along the way so that we can create a database that's directed to families of our loved ones who have served and are now getting out. Because what happens is you get, you go in and your family knows nothing. You serve, and your family knows a little, only because we figured out how to network. And then you're getting out, and what happens is your branch gives you between three and five days of a briefing, they call it, where they put you in a room with, you know, 100 other people and say, here is everything you need for the rest of your life as a veteran. Now, you can take that class multiple times, but I don't know about you, but when I took the ACT prep, I could have taken that 10 times. I wasn't going to hit it all, right? Right. And so what we're doing is creating this database where when, say, when your loved one is getting out, we direct it to you because they're going to come home, right? When my son gets out, he better come home. He doesn't have to live here, but he better come home and hug his mom, you know? Yeah. Well, a lot of uh, the, the um, services available for you as a, as a leaving veteran, right, as a, as a discharging mm-hmm. veteran, is for a very short period of time. And you have to do it from home, from your home base. And so if either of those pieces are missing, you wait two years to do it, you've lost benefits. If you don't do it from home, you've lost benefits. So we're targeting the families with this information so that they can get their kid plugged in. And then the kid can decide, right, or their loved one can decide, no, I'm not going to participate in this amazing thing that will get me a free house down the road or get me $50,000 towards the house. 
And then the, then the loved ones can be like, well, you want to consider, because that's how my parents got a house. That's how my sister got a house. That's how my brother got a house. It literally is life-changing when you get a down payment courtesy of your service to the government, or you get a lower interest rate, or you get additional health benefits. Yeah. And so it, there's something about someone who you love sitting across the table saying, oh, this is something you really need to look at, that we feel like the benefits will be used more and the crises will be reduced. That's yeah. Our- that's yeah and i'm sure that's really part of the the, i'm going to guess it's part of the primary drive of why you do this right is is because you know that that yes being in the service is one set of i can't even imagine the the trauma that they live through but then there's the it's the at some point you're going to get out Mm -hmm. and and we i think we you know, I'm hoping that we all know the kind of, unfortunately, and I'm going to get choked up, uh, struggle that yeah. they they have. Yeah. I was a recruiter uh, I, in the first third of my life. I worked in human resources and was a recruiter for much of that part of my life. And one of my all-time favorite groups to target was members of the military. Yeah. It's like shooting fish in a barrel. You get these <laughs> fabulous people, yeah. right? They are trained. They yeah. are laser focused. Yeah. They are so dedicated to, to, to you. I mean, they're just like, yeah. I'll take you, 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 yeah. you. Just get in here and get to work. Yeah, they're such fantastic people. But I know that not everyone has that kind of, not every business has that kind of focus, has that kind of attention that they can put on actually recruiting them. And of course, a job we know changes people's lives. Mm -hmm. You have a steady salary, you have benefits, you have direction. It just, yeah. yeah. So get up in the morning. Right, right. And there's so much that a trained individual who has already laid their life on the line, or at least said they'd be willing to lay their life on the line, can add to your organization. Why yeah. wouldn't you hire these people? They're just so fabulous. <laughs> and, and they deserve all the rewards and accolades possible. Yeah. We could go on for, for hours about that well, in and of itself. But yeah. There's a lot of, increasingly companies are supporting veterans, and that's one of the pieces of ours. Is You know, we've done all of this stuff from training now to discharge. But right. if the veterans don't know where to go right. or like veteran friendly hiring, that's a piece of this whole thing is like, really, right. what are the pieces that are currently missing or yeah. difficult to find? And we're going to gather them together thanks to this Facebook amazing, yeah. amazingness. Um, yeah, so that they can find companies like your company or my sister's company that says we value veterans more highly because we know you've been trained. We know your teamwork. We know that you're focused. We know you problem solve. And we know you can take orders. <laughs> That, exactly, exactly. And we know that you can learn. And, you know, I think that that in itself is one um, area that people don't really emphasize as, as a skill that's needed. But, hey, you need people who are able to yeah. think quickly, who are yeah. able to learn new things often, and who are able to deal with pressure, and we're not going to shoot you. So, yes. so yeah, there, there are so many things that come as an additional benefits and qualities that these folks get by being part of the service that's just amazing. Yeah, it really is. It really is. And so we hate for them to lose it, you know. And so it just seems to us that um, all of that the next step for us would obviously be help help transition out. Right. Um, but so all of that to say, so I do a lot of work with uh, Facebook groups and I do a lot of group with culture setting and I do a lot of work with how to be visible. And what I didn't realize is we were just chugging along at like four years and 300 days that we had uh, gotten the attention of Facebook. Anyway. And so, uh, one of our members said, hey, I was invited to apply to this. You should apply to it. And so I applied, and it was the Facebook Community Summit. It was the first one ever. Facebook chose 100 groups out of 650,000 and said, yeah. But I'm telling you, like, when, when this was all happening, I thought I was being punked. I'm not, I thought it was a very elaborate. Um, <laughs> I can believe it. Because Facebook, when they, this, is, this is Facebook. This is what they send you, right, on, a, on letterhead. I can make this. Right. I can go to what the font and, you know, like, so I thought for sure I was being punked until, um, what the heck, 
Oh, until they put us in a, in a Facebook group that had Facebook team members and employees that I was like, oh, oh, so this is a real thing. Yeah. So they flew people, or no, they didn't fly people. People came to Chicago, mm -hmm. and um, which is where I'm from anyway, which is why I went, because I'm telling you, I wouldn't have driven to Iowa for this at that point, because I did not know, and it seemed really sketchy. Facebook is secretive. We put a lot of stuff out. We put a lot of stuff out there on my Facebook, but Facebook is very um, methodical mm -hmm. and very close to the vest, and they they release things as as fits their um, schedule mm -hmm. and their priorities. Which you know, I mean, it's a business. That's what they're supposed to do. But for on the other end of it, having never heard of this pro program before, I was like, I don't know. So anyway, they bring us all to Chicago, and it's like a three-day summit, and it was really, really cool. And I was like, well, this is fantastic, and then I went on my merry way, right? Well, then they said, would you test this product for us? Would you partner with us for this and this and this? So for the last 18 months, it's been an almost constant stream of Facebook reaching out to me and saying, can I connect you with another person on our team? Wow. Like units or messenger for kids or you know, subscription group or now Facebook at work and stuff like that. So fast forward again a year from there, and I'm trying to remember how, oh, part of the uh, Facebook group group that they created for us for the summit, they said, hey, we're doing this thing, would you like to apply? And I'm like, I mean, sure. Now that I know you're legit, I'll apply. Out of all of their platforms, so that's WhatsApp, Instagram, Facebook groups, and Facebook pages, we're estimating it's like 6.2 billion users. 6.2 billion users. They chose 100 adults and 15 youth to do what they call a community leadership program. And they named us as one of the top 100 community leaders in the world. So not only have we been recognized as a group for what we do, for the culture that we set, for the work that we do, right. but now I've been recognized by Facebook as a... Individually. As a, as a group leader. But you know the best part of it, Winnie? The head of groups said, Tyrion, you're an expert. And I'm like, ah! legit, that was like one of those things where I was like, I'm going to screenshot this because I don't usually do a lot of that kind of stuff. But I'm like, I want this in my scrapbook. Because first of all, she's a super cool lady. But second, that she recognizes as the head of groups that I am an expert at it, I think is extraordinary. Yeah. It's a moment. You know, I had a moment. <laughs> I, I agree with you. Yeah, the first, I was just thinking about that today. The, the first time that somebody validates that you're smart or that you really are an official expert at what you do. Yeah, it's a, one of those startling kind of moments where you kind of look at yourself a little bit differently, I think, as, as well. So, so this, this Facebook project then that you've alluded to, that's what this is. Is that right? Yes. So uh, how it worked is they named us as leaders and said, we're going to help you build your community. And that's literally all they said. Yeah. <clears throat> what do you want to do? And I'm like, what do I want to do? What do I want to do? Yeah. And I really was like grappling with it. And it's funny because this has happened twice now in the last few months where I'm like, yes, that's a good direction, but that doesn't sit with me. You know, like it just doesn't resonate with me and I can't fully own it. So I was saying oh, we need to train our leaders. I, that one I knew that piece I knew for sure. Especially like this is so perfect for that, that, you know, it, women have a difficult time saying I'm an expert, right? I mean, they, they do. Maybe there's 20 in the world or in the nation right now that are, can easily be like, no, I'm an expert. But it's something that we're not comfortable with where men will run over you to raise their hand and say I'm an expert even when they're not. And that's why we get lost driving with men at, the, at this steering wheel. I agree. But that's my editorial. Anyway. But I see it time and time again where I know they have leadership skills and I know that they could really make a difference, but they're like, nah, not me. Well, that was me four years ago, five years ago. Like, I was an accountant. I was not a public figure. I was not out there live or speaking anywhere. The last time I had spoken publicly was in high school and I was fine with that. <laughs> but it was all these things along the way where I realized like if we don't speak, first of all, if we don't take ownership of our own power, whether it is in... I agree. You know, managing a household, which is no small feat, or running a, a business or a company or an office, or just going to work and kicking butt and doing an amazing job every day where they, your coworkers, your employer, and your management know what an asset you are to your organization. If we don't own that power, we're never going to get to the next step, which is to talk about 
what we have learned through that power process, right? Through that journey to power. And I think for women, it is such a challenge. And so for my women, my ladies, I'm like, hey, you guys, so we've got 14,000 in our main group. So we've got, yeah, I know. And I'm looking at groups that are like a million, million. And I'm like, or 35,000. And I'm like, but I go there and there's like 10 posts, right? Or there's like, it's the same person posting all the time. I'm like, then you're not really, that's not a community. Right, right. I was going to say that. Yeah. That's something else. It's a holding pen. It's a, it may be valuable, but it's not a community. Right. A community, there's give and take. There's engagement. There's yeah. people sharing thoughts that you may not agree with. Right. It's you working through you know, attitude differences, cultural differences, life raising differences, you know, yeah, to get to some shared goal. And it may not even be a goal for the whole community. It may just be a goal. Like we're in this group where we all want to learn to use Facebook better. Right. And um, I love the story of how I got into that group. But, you know, so if we don't own the power, then we can't take the step and we certainly can't step into our power and change our world. And what I know for sure what I know for sure is that every single person was put on this earth to do something. And for a long time when, you know, when I was in my twenties and thirties, my something was to raise my kids, you know, to, to, to put everything I had into my marriage, into my kids so that they would be like these healthy, vibrant human beings that they could stand on their own and give back to society. And I remember saying that when I was changing diapers and it was a singular vision. I didn't know how it was going to happen when I was changing those diapers, but I knew that what I wanted for my kids to be empowered, to be who they are. And to take their corner of the world yeah, and, yeah. and live it. Well, then you move into something else, right? Like, I want to help. I worked for a little church. I want to help this church, like, uh, get systematic about things. We're a little willy-nilly, right? So let's make it a system. And then for a while, I just really didn't know what I was going to do. And then this military mom and network stuff came up. Yeah. I and think that – I'm sorry. Go ahead. It has changed my life. But not just mine. It's changed a lot of people's lives. And I think yeah. it's because – from day one, it was about collaboration. From day one, it was about community. And from day one, it was about stand with me. Don't follow me. Walk with me. Like, we need a big, long line. But that's true for everyone. I, I really believe that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I agree with you. Okay. And, and I, th I think that's part of why we connected emotionally because we've got the same general focus about leadership and that, mm -hmm. that women really do need to own their greatness. And uh, yeah, I agree with you. I think that uh, our, that we're all gifted with a, a purpose or assigned a purpose and, and then gifted with talents and, and strengths and skills that support that purpose. I think what changes is our mission individually yes. may change at different points, but our purpose is always the same. And I, you know, I can see that with you in uh, just throughout your life as you, as you talk about that narrative and, and that purpose has really never changed and it really is to empower people. Yeah. It's to, to help them become the leaders they're meant to be and yes. make a giant impact that they're meant to make. And, and your mission was children. It might've been with this church and now it is on a bigger yeah. scale and you couldn't have been ready for that bigger scale oh, had you not, worked in the mines and built your strengths in those yeah. areas. So that's, I, I do think that's exciting. You know, you, you, so let's talk a little bit about this issue of the group. And I know people, you know, and we'll get to how others can support the organization in just a bit, but that, so there, there are all these, as you just said, a bazillion uh, Facebook groups out there and people are all told that they must have, you know, they should have their own Facebook group for their business. There are different courses and things that they do individually. Do you believe that a group, a group or multiple groups is something that's right for every entrepreneur or is it something that you know you need to hold off a bit and really think about before you just dive in and start creating one well i think that you need to hold off a bit and think for a minute before creating anything right so and here's the thing like i would have answered that differently a few months ago before i went out to facebook mm -hmm. i would have said mm, probably 99 percent of the time yes i think so i think you need a group and because I function very well in groups and I am an expert in groups and I know how to grow a group. Right. And so for me, it's comfortable, right? Like you ask a mechanic, do you need a car and a good mechanic? They're going to say yes. Right. But 
at Facebook, there are people who have huge communities in WhatsApp. There's huge communities on their pages, which I never, never would have been like, what, for real? Uh, huge followers, yes, but no, they have communities. Yeah. Right, where people are back and forth, they're engaged and they're involved. And also on Instagram, like I don't get the Instagram piece because I'm like, you're just commenting back and forth. It's, it feels very much like a public profile, but they're creating this community feel. And there's a gal who has, I don't know, like 650,000 followers, and it's her community. It's not followers like we would say in a business page. So my answer would have been yes, but my answer now is there's a lot of different ways to build community. Mm -hmm. uh, here's what I love about Facebook groups over the other ones. WhatsApp also parallels it pretty well. Is Facebook groups, you can control the privacy yes. of where your people meet, right? And so for me, as someone who values her privacy, you go to my profile, you think I put it all out there, but trust me, I don't put anything near all of it out there. And for, and for information sharing, or, you know, I mean, when you have health problems, or you've got marriage problems, or you've got financial struggles, or you just right. are struggling with who am I in the world and where do I fit in, you're not going to blab that publicly necessary. Right. And that's why I love the groups. But to back up and answer your question, yeah, I think all of that, you need to really stop and think. Like, what's my motive? Right. Right? What, what is it? Um, Stephen Covey says it all the time, or said it all the time. Think with the end in mind. Mm -hmm. If you're a year from now, what would you want to see? And maybe you can't even envision that, but you know what, and it may not look anything like you intend it to be, right? But you want to be connected with other business leaders, or you want to be connected with other people who have the same health struggle, or you want to be connected with other creatives, mm -hmm. right? And it doesn't have to be lofty, and you don't have to have the whole blueprint to say, okay, well, then how am I going to do that? Step back. What would that look like? Do I need privacy? And you can link a page with a group, and so you get both, right? And, and like, think about that. But the other thing is, how are you going to get your message out there? Because you can't change your message five times along the way and have people take you seriously. Yeah, that's a really great point. And I think if there was anything that would make me say, hold off on this, it would be, let's make sure your message is right. And because I know that was one of the struggles that I had just with myself early on in my independent career was figuring out what the heck is my message? What am right. I doing here? And, and I do think that's a big issue. So I'm glad you mentioned that. One thing I want to bring up is this issue that you raised about culture, setting a culture in a group and, and this conversation around community. So let's clarify both of those terms as it relates to, you know, Facebook group and, and this sort of thing. So let's talk about culture. I'd love to hear that definition from your perspective or explanation. What do you see as the culture inside a group and how does that then impact the, the nature of the community? Okay, I'm going to give you an example from this morning. Great. So the culture is like, just like in your house. So you're bringing, you're building this group, right, to grow a business or to grow customer service or just to grow connection with other human mm -hmm. beings. And you know, <clears throat> you may not, and I guarantee you it's going to change, right? Like my thing was I want to support like people who are, whose kids are training. Well, we're not that anymore. We do support that, but we also do a lot more. Mm -hmm. So expect when your vision is, you know, like, I mean, you nailed mine to empower other people into their strengths, right, and their giftings. So let's just use ours. That's not what I said. What I said is I want us to gather together because at least all, all the blind will be in one pen and we can cry together. It was not lofty and it was so that we could get information out quickly, right? But over time, you may not be able to articulate your vision, but it will become very clear, Yeah. you know? Yeah. So go with what you know and realize that you're going to be able to articulate it better and it may change, but don't be like... I'm going to use football analogy, right? I'm a Bears fan. I'm a Vikings fan. Now I'm a Packers fan. No, I'm a football fan. Do you right. know what I mean? Yes. So maybe you're a pro fan or you're a college fan because typically there's some overlap. But one, if you ask football fans, they like one or the other more, right? Mm -hmm. So knowing that and then evolving. So maybe you start out a football fan and then you realize you like pro football better. And then you like, of course, the Bears best. And that's fabulous because by now we've won the Super Bowl. Um. You know, that you're evolving that. And, but you're not over here saying, I'm a football fan, now I'm a tennis fan, now I'm, you know, I hate sports. Right. 
Right. So realize that as you're as you're creating your culture, your culture is going to niche down as you become more clear in your vision. Yeah, yeah. and I, I love that. I'm going to dive in for a second. I love that because I think there is this unique balance. I think part of it is people can be afraid. Well, I don't know what I want, so I'm not going to do anything yet. So so it's remembering that it just takes that first step and and the essence of what you want to create. And I think when we stay focused on, of course, we we'll want to make money, right? We're not going to hide that. But from, from a business standpoint, but when you start with, when you lead with service, I'm going to serve these people and, mm -hmm. and here's my intention to serve them, share mm -hmm. information, share timely information, keep them out of the weeds on X or that okay. sort of thing. So it's this, this combination, I think, of having some level of direction and focus yeah. and then being open to receiving whatever gets played out in front of you as this group grows because I think you know I, I run a coaching group as well as well as Facebook group and and you know it dawned on me that wow we've been together some of us have been together since the very beginning you know clients yeah. come and clients go but there's this essence of this nucleus of clients who stayed with me for years now and I'm like I guess maybe we should evolve this whole thing a little bit more because I really hadn't been thinking two or three years down the pike right. when I first started it. So yeah, just really interesting that it's this combination of mm -hmm. clarity, but also openness to where mm -hmm. are things going to go. Yeah. yeah and I think like, th right, this is how our life is or it should be. We don't do this effectively. That gets you nowhere. And in fact, like I've got grandsons and I'm like, you better unball those fists. You better unball those fists, right? Um, but here's the other piece of it. Okay. So first of all, just realize that what you, like what you said, here's how, where I'm starting out and be open to the journey, right? Because it sounds crazy, but it's really true. Whether it's Facebook groups or pages or any kind of community, there's a journey or you're dead, right? Like you cannot grow if you're not willing to move. So that's the one thing. But the other thing is if you consider whatever you choose, of course, I would say do a group, right? So you're going to create this group, consider it your home. What would you allow in your home? Yeah. And what would you not tolerate, right? So I don't tolerate violence in my home. Well, what does that look like on social media? Okay, so we're not going to do name calling and we're not going to do diminishing other people. Right. And I'm going to ask for clarity, right? When somebody posts something, I'm going to say, what do you mean by that? And let them either dig themselves out or dig themselves down and then we delete the post. Right. So that's the one thing is really like, consider this, you are creating a, if you're doing this properly, you're creating a space where people are going to want to grab a cup of tea or a cup of coffee, cold drink, whatever, and come sit at a screen and connect with you, Winnie, yeah. right? The screen is a tool. The group is a community. So when you start thinking about it like that, so what's the culture? Well, okay, we don't do name calling. Because we're a military group, we support the commander in chief. We supported it when it was President Obama. We're going to support when it's President Trump. We're going to support who's ever after President Trump. We're still in existence. That's our standard because ultimately that's our child's highest boss. Right. And by us wishing ill will on the commander in chief, we wish ill will on our own child. Right. So that was, and we're apolitical. Yes, vote. Don't tell me who you voted for. We're not having a debate. Um, and literally, these are simple things, but that's the way my house is too, yeah. right? Don't, so, come and, so, don't come and argue politics in my living room. Don't do it. Right. So a culture then, <coughs> a group like this, is a combination of rules and vibe is what yes. I'm picking up, right? right. It's that, well, that, creating rules to get to the vibe that you yeah, want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and I tell you the other thing, which is this is a small thing and people don't do it. Mm -hmm. State your rules in the positive. Don't say, we don't do politics. Say, hey, we'd love for you to vote. We don't discuss politics here. Or we're an apolitical group. We're apolitical, right? yeah. yeah. Don't say, we don't do sales. Say, you can handle your sales here. Or this is how you're going to yeah. handle your, right, your self-promotion, whatever. Yeah. So, yeah. And think about that because immediately then, you are setting a culture, a vibe, and an expectation of positivity. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. And I, I think that that, you know, language is so incredibly important to creating a vibe and a culture. And I think that it is, it requires us sometimes to really stop and think because of course, we're all products of our DNA and programming, right? So some of us automatically think in the negative because yeah. of our history of, well, this is how I've been 
yes. have been conditioned. So, it, you know, it's an easy thing to just list all those negative statements and then, yeah. okay, how do I reword that in a po more positive, supportive, or even a neutral, get, get the neutral yeah. good enough kind of, of way to help people understand what we are for yeah. rather than what we're against. So yeah, I think that's that's really awesome. And I think it's also something that we might tend to minimize or forget as we're building our group. But let's get back to this subject of leadership and community. So you mentioned mm -hmm. that you've seen these m much larger groups than yours, and yours is already gigantic, but these larger groups w that have minimal posts, they really don't have what you consider a dialogue, true community, contribution. So can you talk about uh, how, how do you do that? I've seen, I've seen gurus, you know, people that I would think of as gurus who have hundreds and hundreds of people in their group, same thing, it, it almost comes across to me anyway, as they're begging for participation. And I know, you know, I target introverts who are by nature not necessarily that participative. <laughs> so let's, let's talk about that. How do you manage to, because I think there's a, a, some kind of grace there of, of being able to do that. How do you recommend that folks start thinking about creating a true sense of community? And I think safety obviously yeah. must be a big part of it. Right. Yeah, so, and I think that this is Facebook-wide. Our, probably our um, security and safety is a higher level just because of the population we deal with. But here's the thing. So in this Facebook community leadership program, we have a secret group. There's like 120 of us in there because there's some staff and support. There's about 15 of us that talk all the time, which means there's 85 that don't. Yeah. These are the top leaders of Facebook. Yeah. So, staff member of, of Facebook, who's kind of our moderator, was like, oh, I wonder if I'm doing this wrong by targeting the talkers. And here's my take on it. You're creating a community, and just like if you were having a party in your house, and I mean, and you, you'll watch me time and time again. The analogy is my home. My analogy is my home. Mm -hmm. Because that's the feeling that you want. If you want to have a group of 30,000 people and you're the one talking, then what you have is a university classroom, right? You have an auditorium where you're teaching and there's power in that and there's value in that, but that's not community. Don't confuse the two. Having a one-way street, that's why we have a business page, but having a one-way street where you're giving value is important too, but it's not community. So right. Right. back to community. If you're going to have people over at your house, right, and you're going to have a, a dinner party, and you're going to invite 20 people, they're not all going to talk. Right. My husband is a pretty quiet guy. Typically in life, my it's, it's kind of funny. My husband is a pretty quiet guy, typically. But socially, I'm extremely quiet. So I'll be on Facebook and in small groups where it's our people. I will be all engaged in talking and very enlivened, but put me in a party or a social situation. And I am the introvert of introverts. And people never believe it until they see it in action. So what I want to say about this is you're creating a community. Expect that there's going to be people who talk and there's going to be people who don't. Now you can ask questions and I would suggest doing this. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the tools that are available now is create a poll. It's Christmas time here, but you know it's going to be New Year's, and this is—I think this is coming in after the New Year. Mm -hmm. At every season of the year, there are things that you can ask, right? So it's—it's it's late fall. Do you love or wait, late winter? Do you love that last snow, or do you hate it? And then you create questions that you want to drive um, conversation, right? So, do you love that last snow? Yes, I do. No, counting the days till spring. Other are really the answers, right? Right. Well, you want to give them the, the softball one. Oh, does everyone love late snow? No, most people probably don't. So then you want to say yes and other. Comment below so that all the no's can be like, no, I'm sick of the dark snow. I'm tired of winter. I want to put get away my stuff, right? Or if you're in Hawaii, I'm sure there are things, right? there. I can't imagine. I'm sure there are things that are like no's. Do you love tourist season? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Right. The answer probably no comment below, right? So then you drive conversation. Yeah. And then as a community leader, as a group leader, someone who's like building this little world that you want to thrive, you go back and you comment on every single vote, every single other, 
comment it. And I tell you the other thing we're doing, we're doing some work with some of our smaller groups. Mm -hmm. And this is what we do. I went in last night and I said, hey, you guys, we are not as active as we like to be. And we want to help you with that, right? We, we, you help. And then I tag every single person in the group. How are you doing? What's going on? What can we do for you? Yeah. For us, and every, I think everybody has questions like this. So just think about what I'm saying and how it applies to your group, right? Yes. For yeah. us, it, a softball is, is your kid coming home for the holiday? Fill in the holiday, right? Christmas. Easter? Are they coming home over the summer? Right. Is your loved one, um, what branch is your loved one in? What branch do you represent? And then I literally do polls with all of the branches, but then people comment. They always comment. So then comment back and forth, back and forth, right? So think about how you can build community and questions like that, but do it, do it regularly. Yeah. Don't do it once in a while and be like, oh, that didn't work. You have to develop a voice within your group Right. where people are looking for you for this particular voice. Maybe it's education. Maybe it's encouragement. Maybe it's just collaboration or commiseration. You know, when I have a friend who's fighting breast cancer, you go into a breast cancer group and there's a lot of different, different um, approaches to dealing mm -hmm. with breast cancer and they let it all. But my person that I'm connected with in that group that runs the group uh, comments on all of them and just empowers them. And she shuts some down. Don't be afraid to, when you're setting the culture for your group, right, to delete right. comments. And here's the thing, like, here's a journey that I went on. Delete comments. People get mad. Oh, my gosh, they're going to leave the group. Okay. Because you know what? If they're not, if they're not building the culture that you're looking for, whatever your, your culture is, they're always going to be an anchor to it. So let them find a group that is their culture. Right. You're not doing them or you or your group any favors by keeping them there for a number. Right. That's, it took me a long time to be okay with that. A yeah, long I think that is a super, super great point. I was just having a conversation before we got on with a uh, potential client who was just so committed to my audience is everybody. And I'm thinking to myself, you might think you're on it. And I told her, I said, you know, you're not going to hit anybody if you're no. too busy focused on trying to hit everybody. Because there are people who don't want help. Yeah. And if you're in a helping profession and you have, you know, this calling to really fix this problem, there are people who want to stay in the problem. Yeah. They don't want to leave. Stop trying to convince them to come out of the hole. They're yeah. happy in the hole, they think, yeah. and they're going to stay in the hole. And if they came out of your hole and weren't ready and they infect other people who are yeah. out of the don't leave them in the hole until they are ready to get out on their own. And then they'll decide, do they want to come with you or do they want to go someplace else? But stop talking to everybody. Yeah. I created a little pop-up group and the, the intention was uh, to help direct sellers uh, yeah. craft their message. And it was free. I gave like 10 free lessons and said, hey, if you would like to continue to work with me, I'm creating this other group. And three people said, no, this is great for free. And I'm like, okay, well, you got free. And I removed them from the group. It's not that I'm not going to keep putting content in there, but when your answer is, yeah, that's fine, but I'm just going to take what you're going to give me for free. I know you're never going to work with me, right? right. You're, and it's not that they wouldn't invest because I set the investment price at low, but when your answer is, yeah, that's okay. And I worded it that way on purpose, you know, no, this is fine for free, but I don't want to, okay. I'm not your person. That's okay. Right. But, you know, knowing that, and being okay with that and letting people go. Like, it's that clenched hand, open hand thing. Like, just let them go. And they'll know where to come if they decide they want to do whatever it is that you're offering them to grow. Right. Right. Or they need help. The thing that I've seen, too, over the last five years is where people, oh, my gosh, I remember this one, like, left in this big blow up. Like, try, oh, it was name calling, vicious, where I was like, what just happened? Yeah. One, it was one of my leaders. And she, like. I mean, honestly, I think that she was having emotional problems, but didn't realize it. And this was what showed her that she needed to step away, which good for her that she did. Yeah. And I, and I messaged her. I'm like, listen, I'm just concerned about you. I don't know how truly, con I was concerned, but I was like mad too. You know, it wasn't like I was Pollyanna. I'm like, oh, please kick me in the teeth again. I'm concerned about you. But I wanted to leave it in a, on a note that was, hey, the door's open, but for now you need and she had already left, but you, if you ever come back, we're here when you need, and you know, six months later, 
she came back and she apologized and she rejoined the group and she's an active member. She's never going to be in leadership again. But I think she also realizes she can't take the strain of leadership. Um, but she's, she's an active member. There's another person, same thing happened, like her, and I literally watched this happen too. Having someone you, you love in the military is a very stressful thing. So when I'm talking about people cracking under the pressure, 14,000 and like five have. So it's like a one in a thousand. But the thing is, for those five, it really matters. And do I want to be that person that's like, well, tough, and like dump them? No. Well, this one lady left, and then she wanted to come back. And so we have questions, right, mm -hmm. toward your culture. You have an ability when you're creating a group to ask questions. Ask those questions that filter people out. Right. Right. You ask them, how did you find us? Ask them, what do you hope to get out of this group? That will help you filter a lot of people out. And then the third one, make it a question that's unique to your organization. Ours is, what branch do you belong to? Or do you, you know, align with? Align <clears> with. <throat> so anyway, she kept answering these questions. Well, then all my people who help me add people on are like, Jerry, and I'm like, nope, she, she knows what she needs to do. She blocked me. I messaged her. Well, then she blocked my messenger. And I'm like, okay. So the last that I heard from her via somebody else is that this was very unprofessional that I would expect her to, you know, friend request me. Well, one, that's gone long ago. But two, if you are working on our team, and again, these are all culture things. Mm -hmm. If you are working on our team, so when he say you need five people to help you, right? You're going to want those people. You're going to want to know what they're doing. You're going to want to know what kind of people they are. You're going to want to know that they're consistent with your philosophy and your approach of life because they are an extension of you. Right. Well, this lady was offended by that. And I'm like, be offended, but you're not coming back. It's a fact, right. Right. You, you know? can be offended by it, but it's still the facts. And yeah, I think that that's something that we often don't really think about is that anybody who works with you, whether it is a paid VA, whether it is somebody who is volunteering their time, whether it is somebody who has accepted some level of leadership role for whatever remuneration you provide in your, your group or your organization, there are these, they're, they're really your ambassador. Yes. They, they are the reflection of your organization, whatever that organization may be, to the public, to the members, to the whoever. And that's why culture is so important. Yeah. And, and that's why, and, you know, back to my recruiting days, everything starts with who you're bringing in yes. and why it's so important that you think this through as you start really actively growing and building your group. So let's, let's touch on just a couple of other things. One is how do you actively build and grow a group? Uh, one, it's by having this, this niche and this focus, right? What are some other tips that you would give to, to help people grow their group? Well, so one, just be very clear your vision. I know it sounds simple, but be yeah, very clear that there are going to be people who come to your group, and, and, and the temptation is, I want numbers. I mean, everyone gets there. I don't know how many people really talk about it, but everyone gets there where you're like so close to whatever this number in your head is, or you're in this period of stagnation, and then you're starting to grow, and you're going to like, okay, I'll let the dog catch her, and even though I'm a cat pound, you know what I mean? Right. Don't. Like, be true to your vision, but you have to know your vision. Yeah. Not your necessarily journey, but like, you know, like, let it set. It's okay. You don't have to do that. Engage your people and engage them in a way that's very sincere and authentic. Don't be from coming on high. Be from someone a couple steps ahead. Engage them as if they were like you and I are talking, right? So imagine, and literally, this is what I teach in class. Like, sit down, close your eyes, close your eyes and imagine that person on the other side of the screen. What are they worried about? What are they thinking about? This is nothing unique, but people don't do it. When you are speaking to the people in your group, you may be doing everything right. right. It just takes a while to catch on. Like, Be willing to speak yeah. to yourself kindly. Tag people. Understand that most people aren't going to respond, and that's okay. But the ones that do respond, keep the conversation going. Comment back on their comments and stuff like that. Uh, right before this summit, I went – I. I, un, what is, I, I knuckled under uh, peer pressure. I had been getting a lot of very loud voices saying, we need to be a closed group. People can see what's going on in our group. Oh, we had a closed group. Oh, we had this other. So I closed the group. Well, when you're big, you can't unclose it. So now I'm stuck as a closed group. But I'm bawling because literally within two days of doing that, Facebook released insights where I saw that we had 90% activity level. Wow. 
which is extraordinary, and we're still up there. So did I need to close the group? No, I sure did not. But I listened. I didn't listen to my gut. I listened to the voices around me. And, yeah. and again, like the lessons are simple, and they're the same ones over and over again. Listen to your gut. Listen to yourself. You know where you're headed. Yeah. Um, and I went to these guys, and I was like literally crying in this little thing because you could sign up for like one-on-one -on -one talk. And I'm like, how do I get? I don't, I don't even know. And they're like, just keep doing what you're doing. Facebook recognizes it. And that's still true to this day. And it's still the advice that I give to this day. If you are, we serve 1% of the population, Winnie, 1% of the population, my group does, right? If you serve women entrepreneurs, you're way bigger than 1%. If you serve women introverts, you're way bigger than 1%. Women travelers, let's just focus on women, right? New moms, that's a lot. If you continue to stay true and you know what your culture is and you stick with it, if you gather people in, if you use polls and you go live and you ask questions and engage people and think, okay, this is where we're headed. How do I get there? Think with the end in mind and just continue on that path. Take other people's advice, but in the end, let it sit with you, right? Because there's a lot of voices out there and there's a lot of social media experts that I'm telling you, they're not experts. And I tell you something that infuriates me, and if you're watching this, do not do this. They have these things called follow trains, right? You join my group, I'll join your group. You follow me on Instagram, I'll follow you on Instagram. Guess what that means? Absolutely nothing. Yeah. You have now bloated your numbers, mm -hmm. and you have 20,000 members in your group, and you've got a 2% engagement rate. The reason why Facebook continues to recommend me, I don't know if you guys know this or not, so Facebook recommends based on like a spider web. Okay. So Winnie and I met through Molly. Mm -hmm. Now I'm in Winnie's group. Winnie, are you in any of my groups? I don't think you are. I, I don't know that I am to be honest. Okay. Well, with you right now. so we're all loaded up on this side, right? We're right. connected probably five different ways on this side, but none on this side. Right. So what Facebook is seeing is that Winnie and I overlap, but we don't actually interact. So as we're doing this, and we're doing Military Mom Network, so it's Military Mom Network, Army Moms, uh, Military Mom Network, local group, um, a couple Army pages that interact with these, right? And then as this continues to grow, then Facebook continues to uh, recommend these groups and these groups to the other members, Okay. Mm -hmm. right? So if you are one-sided, right. you're not going to get a lot of suggestions. But what we've seen over and over again is because we're we're dual sided we get recommended all the time so that's the one thing you can do be active get your people active realize that not everybody's going to talk and that's okay mm -hmm. but continue to ask them and set specific days where it's easy for you because you can schedule them and you look like you're online but you're not right so if you are an entrepreneur I'm suggesting that you take one day of the weekend and talk about how we relax how we rebalance how we you know take a breath Take another day and don't choose Friday because everyone chooses Friday. Like, what's the day that you're going to crush it for the week, right? Right. And then literally just load up, say, on Thursday at 2 o'clock. Hey, what are you doing on Friday to finish your week? What's your final goal for the week? Load up those posts. Do pictures. They just added a badge called Visual Storyteller, which means they're valuing pictures. If Facebook is creating badges, you guys, and you see a new badge pop up in your group, pay attention because yeah. that's what they're valuing. So what are they tracking right now? New members that talk a lot. They're called right. rising stars. Right. Visual storytellers. That means people are engaging visually, not just with words. Um, another one is in, engagers. I forget what they call it, but something. Yeah, people who come in oh, on other Conversation people. starters. Conversation oh. starters, right. Conversation right. starters. It means that you're posting something that other people are talking back on. But they also are tracking how many people um, click the thumbs up, the heart, all of that. Mm -hmm. You guys, the thumbs up means absolutely nothing. Right. Nothing. Right. Don't use it. Facebook tracks how you're using those emojis and by how long it takes you to decide. Which one you choose, how long it takes you to decide. But behind the scenes on your group, you'll see that they Facebook values all three pieces. Posting, responding, and emojiing. So do it all and have your people do it. Have an emoji war. You know, recognize those who speak, but also recognize those who are new to your group. And you should have some kind of welcome packet, right, that says, 
Hey, welcome to Winnie's Amazing Introverted Entrepreneur Group. Um, we realize that you're an introvert, so you're probably going to shy away from conver you know, conversation. But we just want you to know that we're glad you're here. Mm -hmm. If you're comfortable with it, because that speaks to who they are, introduce yourself below. If you're not, come back when you are. Give them permission to do it later. Right. right. Super simple. So if you know your population and you know your people, then you can do that. So as, as Facebook is rolling out these recognitions, pounce. Because it's in, it's in the early stages of, hey, this is important to us. But you can be ahead of the curve, which means you're going to be recognized by Facebook algorithm more. Be in the you know, connected groups. Even if you're just there as a member, it doesn't matter. Facebook recognizes that I'm in like 47 social media groups. So now they're starting to recommend other social media groups. Well, I've started leaving them because I don't really want to be in other social media groups. Right. I want to follow people who know more than me. And there's hardly, I mean, this sounds really arrogant, but I don't care. There's hardly anybody that knows more than me in running Facebook groups. And honestly, I don't know that there is because the yeah. way and numbers, number of ways and number of different independent recognitions that I've received and earned. But what I want to learn about is how to run my page better. So I'm tracking people who run pages really well, right? I don't need to be in a group where there's 10,000 people who aren't talking. I want to be in groups that are engaged right. because I don't have time, right? Yes. So think about that. Who is your person like me? How would you want to get them in the group? And then how would you keep them in the group, Yeah. right? <clears throat> so I think that answers your question. Yeah, it does. It does. And, all day long. And, and obviously, and, and really great information. So we want to do two things now <clears throat> as we wrap this up. One, we want to go back to Military Mamas and talk yeah. about how can folks support that organization, and then we'll talk about how they can get in touch with you and learn more about your offerings and, and get help from you. So tell us more about the group and how we can best support the group, because maybe we're not a mama like, like me, but maybe we want to, we still love our military folks, right. and maybe we want to support them. So how do we do right. it? So our group is, it's called Military Mama Network, M-A-M-A, because -M -A, there's spellings that are different, <laughs> right. different parts of the country I've discovered. Um, but our thing is, if you love our troops and want to support them, join us. You don't have to be a mama, and our, our tagline is not just mamas anymore, right? So I've got a lot of people who just want to support our military or just want to support our veterans. Great. And so just join the group and tell them when he sent you. And then um, I will make sure my people know right before this goes live to let Winnie's people in. Uh, you can follow our business page by the same name. The difference between a business page and a business and a group, if you don't know it, is you like a page, you join a group. Mm -hmm. And so for us, just to make it again a little easier to differentiate, our business page is Military Mama Network, all one word. Um, our group has a TM, and it may even have an R by then because we're getting registered for a trademark. Great. But there's a little symbol next to it to delineate that it's a group, not a page. And then just join in. And we have projects all the time. We do birthday parties for kids of active duty members. We, did, we just sent a bunch of Christmas stuff. We send boxes year-round. We sent, I think we're going to send about 30,000 cards in 2018. We've been climbing every year. Uh, since then. So we always need people who can gather cards, send cards, get cards signed. If you belong to a chamber of commerce or anything like that, we would love to have the connections for that. But start with joining the group. It's a great place to be. So. Great. Great. All right. Awesome. So tell us how we can get in touch with you. And of course, we'll have links and all this stuff in the show notes. Right. Tell us how we can get in touch with you, learn more about what you offer. Because I know you not only speak and obviously come on shows, you you actually teach this stuff, right? You have You have courses that you teach. So Give us the 411 on that. I do. Yeah, so I started um, consulting because people are asking me constantly, and I'm like, I don't have enough time, so now I'm going to start charging people because everyone wants a free answer, but if you have to pay to learn, it, it shrinks the pool. <clears throat> so I teach people how to use Facebook effectively and, and a little bit of Instagram only in that it feeds back to Facebook, and it really how to use groups to grow your business or serve your business needs. So. How you can find me is hey G H E Y G exclamation point. Um, or just find me on Facebook. There's my name. I'm getting there. And it's uh, part of my bio, which yours should be part of your bio too. Mm -hmm. And I have free groups, I have paid groups, I have subscription groups, and I do pop up groups for one particular thing, and then I archive it and do the next particular thing. So just depending on when you find me, 
if you need particular help right away, go to my business page and message me and I've got a bot who will get you taken care of to get to me for your problem. But there's just, you know, there's questions that everybody answers and for us to be able to get you the answer the fastest and not waste time, you will get the Hey G bot. So yeah, come find me, I would love it. And I do uh, Tuesday tips. Well, currently I do Tuesday tips. We'll see if it changes. Uh, with just different things you can use on social media to grow your space. Jerry, this has been fantastic. I could go on for days, but people will be happy to know we won't. But we will <laughs> definitely include all of the links to the groups, the pages, and all the different ways that you can get in touch with Jerry specifically because she's the queen. Why would you not want to get in touch with her and connect with her? So thanks so much for spending so much time with me and sharing all this great information. And just for all the fab stuff you do for your community and all the folks that you help about Facebook. And uh, I'm, I'm going to resist the temptation to boo-hoo. But thanks so much for being here. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right, I hope you found that helpful. Jerry Ann's a great person. I just admire her so much. If you like this episode, please share it with your connections. Please leave a great review for it on the platform where you consumed it, and you can become a fan of the show and access back episodes and resources by going to couragepodcastfan.com and signing up for The Vault. It's free, of course, and includes back episodes from every season, along with bonus content and resources, all in one convenient place. In addition to the episodes, you'll get information, tips, and resources to help you get clarity on your message, get the courage and confidence to get that message out in a more powerful way, and reach your business goals. All right, so your cocktail exercise, otherwise known as a reflection exercise, no alcohol needs to be involved, don't drink and drive, don't overindulge. All right, if you already have a group, I want you to think about the overall vibe you're creating. What are your plans for the group, and what's the mission? Have you even thought about that? Can you articulate it? Do you have it written down? Does the group know it? Are you clear about all of that? Is the mission based first on serving others? Is your group all about you? If you don't have a group and you're thinking of starting one, first think about why you're starting one and then what do you want that group to be about? Do you have an existing audience that's already on Facebook that will want to be part of this community? What do people want? Do you have the resources to manage, grow, and promote the group? And your action step. Ask those you're connected to who you think would be a good fit for your group or the group you're thinking of and ask them what they like and don't like about being in a group. Ask what needs they have on the topic that you want to start this group around and then don't be surprised if they don't know. So share your ideas without saying, well, I'm thinking about starting a group and because people can be really uncomfortable with giving you negative feedback. They don't want to stomp on your dream or make you feel bad. So take the opinions that you get with a grain of salt. Ideally, it's best to use some kind of anonymous survey document, but know that only a small number of the people you ask are going to actually complete it. Keep in mind, this is a numbers game to a degree. If you already have a small audience or you have a small following, a small number of clients, they may not want to be part of a group or it might be hard for them to really actively participate. And if you, like me, serve an audience of people who may be hesitant to contribute, then you might feel that it's all about you, you know, and that's, I know, not what you want. So you're going to want to think about and implement tactics to encourage people to contribute, to help them get the, the most that they can out of the group, and to help you feel like this is really worth your time. So, of course, connect with Jerry Ann and Military Mom and Network. They're just great to observe what Jerry Ann does, how she's organized the groups, and of course, the mission is fantastic. So you can just watch how it's done and observe what you like, what you don't like, what you think will might work for you. All of our contact information, of course, is in the show notes at winnieanderson.com slash military mama, which is all one word. And remember, that's spelled mama, M-A-M-A. If you like this episode, please share it with others. And remember, you can become a fan of the show and get access to The Vault, which has all the back episodes in both audio and video format, along with bonus material and worksheets sometimes. You can find that at couragepodcastfan.com. 
And in addition to the episodes, you'll get information, tips, and resources to help you come out of hiding, get your message out in a more powerful way, and achieve your business goals so you can profit from your expertise. And if you're an introverted solo professional or someone with introverted leanings and you'd like to hang out online with a community of like-minded and like-personality professionals, then head over to winnieanderson.com slash join the group, all one word, and join my Courageous Success community on Facebook. It's for introverted mission-driven entrepreneurs and it's where I share tips and strategies to help you achieve the success you dream of and deserve in alignment with your beliefs, values, and personality. Thanks for listening, and remember, you deserve all the success you dream of.